this meeting to order. This is the regular session of the Mayor of Council of the City of Bisbee County and Fort Chiefs in the state of Arizona to be held on Tuesday, September 4, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Cochise County Board of Supervisors Hearing Room, 1415 Melody Lane, Building G, Bisbee, Arizona. Ms. Cornell. Councilmember Adam Light, here. Councilmember Joe Hansen, here. Councilmember Frank Davis is excused. Mayor David M. Smith, here. Councilmember Bill Higgins, Councilmember Bill Higgins, here. Mayor Pro Tem Douglas Dunn, here. Councilmember Nate Lindstrom, here. City staff Robert Smith, City Manager, Ashley Coronado, City Clerk, Wayne Wallace, Interim Operations Manager, Albert Echapa, Police Chief, Britt Henson, City Attorney. Thank you, ma'am. For tonight's invocation, I'd like a moment of silence to uh, reflect upon the nation and Arizona's loss of a great statesman and the uh, patriot, uh, Senator John McCain.
Hey, well, you do take a look at it. Uh, look really close at the logo of the Iron Man because that's an actual photograph that's been placed there. It's not a, a, a drawing. It's really incredible. So uh, thanks for that. But we have no call to the public. And uh, we'll be moving on to accounts payable, general business item one. Accounts payable. Thank you. Do we have a second? I second. We have a motion. We have a second. Do we have discussion? Have yes. Uh, on page four, under <coughs> operational expenses, um, we have three different lunches here that total up to over $200. Um, is that a single person doing that, for, uh, you know, the city manager doing this, or is it for a group? sure why all three charges showed up on the same charge date. Uh, that might have just been the day that they were actually paid. The two wastewater were two separate days. The first day we had their lab technicians uh, come down uh, from Pima County to teach us how to do the reporting. We took them out to lunch. Um, the second day we actually had their field personnel come in to show us how to set up all the field samplers and everything so that the following week we could actually not get another day of and those were two separate dates. I think just the way that it's paid on the Bank of America is all all comes in and paid on one day. So I, I can assure you, I, yeah, they were, they were two separate days. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah let me, before you go on that, let me, let me just, um, when, when we were having these lunches and so forth, that's notated, that notation is on the receipt, correct? It's turned in. Um, yes, sir. I, I turn in a receipt that shows uh, what was spent and what was bought and the names of all the people that were there and the date and why I was, uh, why I did that. So all of that paperwork is with me. And that's what's being sent out to the members of the council? Um, I don't think that we're circulating the receipts and the documentation. I believe we are. Are we? Okay. Yes, and that's why I was just mentioning. Well, because okay. I, I did go through all of the invoices and I didn't see these. Well, and we, something we need to find out why. So that's why. And that's I, why I'm bringing it up. I'm asking, yeah. Yes, and I'm, and we would have an answer for you this evening, but Carrie's out this week. Um, so um, she uh, will be able to provide details for you when she gets back next week. Right, and that's all I was saying is that uh, as long as we're setting off the receipts out, let's make sure we're getting it all out. So. Okay, and then the last one I have is on page 13, and that's under um, 
It's dinner for the Office of Tourism for 215.19. Again, that was my question. Is this one person, two people? Is it a group? Um, no receipt for that. And, no, I, like I said, I went to every invoice and I, I didn't, I may have missed it, but I didn't see either one of us. We're going to have to get you that one, Ms. Klein, because um, she's not here. Jenna's not here. She would be, she would be the one that would answer that question. So can we uh, follow up, please, get that information and, 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 uh, and get it out to us to, as to what that was? Yes, sir. Anything else? Nothing in particular. Yes, just the one thing I noticed on this, this, all of it, is there seemed to be a lot of more than usual travel and dinners and lunches. And, you know, I just think well, maybe something to watch in the future. There seems to be a lot of it. You know, nickels and dimes add up. And that's my comment. Okay. Anything else? Second. Those in favor of hanging accounts payable, please signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried 6 0. Consent <coughs> agenda. Pardon. A through L. Approval of the minutes of the regular session of the Air Council held on July 30. 2018 and 7 p.m. B. Approval of the minutes of the regular session of the Mayor Council held on July 17, 2018 and 7 p.m. C. Approval of the minutes of the special session of Mayor Council held on July 23, 2018 at 5.01 p.m. D. Approval of the minutes of the work session of the Mayor Council held on July 23, 2018 at 5.30 p.m. E. Approval of the minutes of the work session of the Young Council held on July 26, 2018 at 5.01. F. Approval of the minutes of the regular session of the Young Council held on August 7, 2018 at 7 p.m. H. Or G. I guess that is the alphabet, isn't it? Uh, approval of the minutes of the regular session of the Young Council held on August 21, 2018 at 7 p.m. H. Approval of the resignation of Jewel Maxwell from the Bisbee Arts Commission. I. Approval of a park facility right away use permit for the use of City Park for the 30th Annual Festival of Lights on Friday, November 23, 2018, from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., with set up and take down from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. J. Approval of the park facility right away use permit for the Bisbee Coalition for the Homeless for the 4th Annual Bisbee Mariachi Festival 2018 on Saturday, November 3rd, 2018. K. Approval of a special event liquor license application submitted by Bisbee Pride, Inc. for an event to be held at Club Kilimanjaro, located at 33 Subway Street on Saturday, September 22nd, 2018 from 6 p.m. to 1 a.m on Sunday, September 23, 2018. Dorian Edwards, applicant. L, approval of a special event liquor license application submitted by the Bisbee Council on the Arts and Humanities, DBA, Bisbee Mining and Historical Museum, for an event to be held at the Bisbee Masonic Lodge, 89 Main Street, on Saturday, October 11, 2018, from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Council, does anybody have uh, anyone wish any one of these polls for this session? Hearing that, I make the same motion. I move that uh, we approve uh, the consent agenda items A through L. Second. Thank you. We have a motion and we have a second. Ms. Gordon, please. Council Member Klein? Aye. Council Member Hansen? Aye. Council Member Higgins? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dem? Aye. Council Member Lindstrom? Mayor Smith. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Six so. <clears throat> New business item number three. Discussion of possible authorization for the mayor to sign a letter 
to request donation for the 30th Annual Festival of Lights. Mr. Wallace. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, just a, a simple letter out of requesting for donations. Uh, I had some discussions with our staff recently on why we've never actually gone out to solicit donations for the festival lights instead of just spending uh, the city money on it. Because I believe there's a lot of merchants here in the adjacent towns that might be willing to donate prizes or, or something else uh, for things like this. Uh, so uh, I spoke with the city manager. He suggested that my letter should come from the mayor and council. So that is what is before you. And we have a plan on where these are going? Uh, whoever will give us anything. <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, I, I, I'd like to hit some of the, the merchants, not just in, um, you know, everyone goes old Bisbee, I understand that, but I'd like to hit, you know, we have two hardware stores that are, are, are rather local. We can donate gift cards or, or whatever else. Um, we still have safe, we have some local businesses. Sure. And I'd like to hit up the big boys in Walmart. And, you know, what, they can either give us something or say no, or used to be told no anyways. So it just see that that's what gives us some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Okay. Any questions? Do we have a motion? I move to approve the task letter to request donations for the 30th annual Festival of Lights to be held Friday, November 23rd, 2018, from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. We'll set up and take down from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, those in favor? Say goodbye by stating aye. Aye. Those things aye. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Item number four is public hearing and the discussion of possible approval of a special use permit 18-01 submitted by Albert Mendez for a 32 square foot off-site advertising sign at 10 Copper Clean Plaza. Mr. Esparza, before uh, Mr. Hanson, should we have the public meeting before it's presented or after? I think you would probably want to have it afterwards because if people were going to make comments, they would have sure. had the information. Excellent. Thank you, sir. False alarm, I'm sorry. Okay. Won't be the first class I think. So, Mayor and Council, um, before you, is a request for a special use permit submitted by Albert Mendez. And for the record, Mr. Mendez has informed me that he is out of town for a medical appointment and cannot attend. He did attend the DRB as well as the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, but I did want to mention that. So, I think we'll that. Um, so here's a photograph of the building where the sign is being proposed. You can see GRASP has a sign there currently, so it'd be directly to the right of that, approximately the same size. So currently the reason this is coming before um, the council is the way the code is written up that any sign that's an off-site advertising sign and it's less than 50 square feet would have to go through the special use permit process. So um, the, the, the first stop was at the design review board, but if you want to advance them, it's going on to the next. So here's the actual sign that's being requested, like I said, 32 square feet, but it did have to stop first at the uh, design review board and they have to make some sort of determination if that's in compliance with their district guidelines. So I believe it was Ju July 5th is when that went before the DRB. The DRB did review the request and they did recommend to the Planning and Zoning Commission that, that the sign would be permitted. Um, that then followed to the Planning and Zoning Commission. That went to them on August 16th. The public hearing was held and uh, again the the request was considered by the Plan Zoning Commission and they did make a recommendation. But in that review, uh, certainly staff um, in place, there are seven criteria that staff looks at for determining the appropriateness of a special use permit. So I did identify uh, you know, compliance with the zoning district. Well, clearly this is a commercial advertisement in commercial zone, so there's not a conflict there. Uh, compliance with site development standards. Um, a sign up to 50 square feet would be permitted. This is at 32 square feet, so there's no conflict there. Uh, Off-site impacts really did not uh, determine there to be any real offset, I mean, any impacts, you know, within the historic district. I think, again, with the existing sign that's already in the building, again, it's, it's not out of character to have this sign being requested. And uh, as far as uh, 
public input, um, did notify all of the property owners within 300 feet of this request, so I did send out letters, and did not get any comments back. If I recall, both at DRB as well as the Planning Commission, there was no objections to the uh, opposition to the request. And also, so as far as the analysis, again, didn't determine there would be any negative impacts within the historic district. And uh, again, just as a consideration, certainly with uh, with the requests that come in, if there's numerous requests, certainly council want to consider how that will impact the visual appeal of the historic district. So I just I, I mentioned that. And again, with public comments, we did, like I said, letters were sent out, uh, posted the property, uh, made sure it was on the city's websites. Um, so again, making sure they all public have an ample opportunity to comment on, on the request. And then finally, the, the planning commission did forward a recommendation it was unanimous for the approval of this special use request for this 32 square foot off-site advertising sign. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Council, any questions of Mr. Esparza? Hearing now, I'll open the public hearing. Public hearing is open. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of this spe uh, special use permit? Again, anyone wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, is there anyone that wishes to speak against this? Please. neighborhood. I'm not actually against a whole concept of a sign being signed for your advertising, but my personal opinion is that it would have been kind of nice if you could have used an old plumbing wrench and could have used a design that would reflect the antique nature of our town. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak against this permit? Hearing none. Ms. Coronado will be receiving any emails, phone calls, or regular mail regarding this issue. No, sir. Thank you, ma'am. This hearing is now closed. Do we have a motion, Council? I move to approve special use permit 18 01 for a 32 square, uh, 32 square feet off site advertising sign to be located at number 10 Cuffman Crossing. Thank you. I'll second that. Uh, Ms. Cornado, would you call the roll? Councilmember Klein? Aye. Councilmember Hansen? Aye. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dunn? Aye. Councilmember Lindstrom? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Esparza. Discussion of possible direction of staff regarding the petition submitted by Donald Pohl concerning insurance monies for the City Hall fire. Ms. Pohl, <coughs> you signed up to speak. Revenues that are coming out of that insurance money. 
And I just would ask if the city manager has any comments or questions, um, or a qu the question would be, is there any reason why this would not be feasible to occur? I can, I can. Uh, can I get an answer from the city manager? In a minute. Okay. Um, I can state that uh, one thing is that it is a misconception if people believe that we have multiple bank accounts, that uh, something going into the general fund is, can easily still be in his or your mark for certain things. If you give money for the pool, it doesn't go into a pool fund, it goes into the general fund and it's earmarked specifically for that, is used for that. So I'm simply indicating that there are multiple accounts that are set up with separate checkbooks and separate expenditures and things like that. That's what accounting does. That's why everything is in charge of accounts and actual account numbers to go from because it is continually monitored. So I just wanted that to make for other people that don't know that, I want to make sure that they understood that. And Mr. Smith, do you have a reply? Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, the funds are being accounted for properly at the moment. Uh, there was a presentation, I believe, last week on where we stood with those. Uh, we can put the funds wherever council would like. We can call the account for the funds wherever council would like. It's up to council in terms of uh, what you might want to call the account or where you want to put the funds. The other point that I would like to suggest is that if this would be um, made in the form of a motion, that if that a special account was uh, set aside for established for these funds um, if they were used for any other purpose other than for the rebuilding of City Hall that um, it would be done through a supermajority vote by council and it would be done under the terms of a resolution. So. Thank you. Mr. Kambach. Welcome, Mr. Kambach. Thank you, Mayor Council. Um, I'm here tonight to speak in favor of this 99% of, of it. Uh, the reason why is it's really about transparency and being able to track the funds. Uh, I know you get monthly financials. I get those by regular requests. And it's really hard to see each, each department takes money out for certain replacements, other things come in, and there's never really a total running number. Uh, so in order to, to make more transparency and make it more easily trackable of, of what this important amount of money is for, and I guess my last reason is I really come back to our city charter. And if you really want to, to believe on our city charter, there's a section under 606, which is special revenue funds, which states that the special revenue funds shall be established to account for revenues from either specific tax assessments, which this wouldn't be, or special sources, which are to be used for, for financial specific activities and anticipated expenditures and shall not be diverted for other uses, except by resolution and approved by a 5 seventh vote. Um, any such uh, diversion shall not be treated as an emergency measure. So under our charter, it's set up for this exact type of thing. It's a very special thing. Who would ever believe a city hall would burn down and we would have money that was there? It would also give more transparency to the overall general fund. It wouldn't be shown as revenue. I know the city manager the other day just put out a, 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 you know, an op-ed. He did clarify that some of that that the money coming in was part of the insurance money, but it never, it doesn't ever really clock out. Where if it's in its own revenue fund, if you want to put in the cap improvements, that's fine with me, or if you want to start a special revenue fund. But it's just, a, uh, it seems like the right thing to do it would give people a lot of uh, satisfaction knowing in, in a way that, that people like me and other individuals might be able to track. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I believe uh, 
this I'm wrong, I believe this employee's uh, request was for a six, seven, or am I incorrect? The petition. Right, and the super, and I believe the super majority is five, seven, is just stated. So, uh, and I discussed that with legal, and I think that we would have to have other hoops involved to uh, make changes to the charter or code, is that correct? <laughs> okay, you, you answered, yes, that's I, correct. I answered, I answered. Yes. <laughs> Anything else I can answer for you, sir? <laughs> Thank you. Um, what I would like is for finance to provide a I'd like us to consider finance providing a game plan as to how this is accomplished, uh, remembering that um, for an accounting, as, as, as Mr. Budge was saying, that we this insurance money is there. We can call it the insurance fund. I don't care. Uh, yeah, and that it, it is there, and that when the time comes to buy 14 desks that we'll know exactly 14 deaths or five and that comes out of that. Is that, can I, can I get ahead of that yes or no? Yes. All right. Because now it shows up either whatever department bought it. In other words, a desk was bought for, for public works, one was bought for whatever. So that's okay. what we see. Okay. That would be coming out, that would be coming all out of the fund though, not for the individual. Right. And as it is now, that's how replacements mm -hmm. happen. Uh, Council, do, does anybody disagree with that, that approach of getting finance to tell us how, how best to accomplish this? No, I think it's a good idea to have it into a separate fund just for the, uh, it, it seems that the, the, there's be some, there's be some <coughs> citizens are a little anxious about it, and I can understand that it's a lot, a lot of money, and I think the more transparency that we can give them, make them feel comfortable, the better we are, as long as it's not duly um, putting more work on the finance, which I don't think it will. Okay. Mr. Jacobson, I think uh, John Hanson uh, made, made a lot of sense. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Mr. Dunn? No, I agree, and I think it's also an opportunity to, to solicit additional funds, private or otherwise, and uh, certainly uh, we have set designated other occasions designated certain sums of money for do as donations, and I think that's important to do that. So, you know, but right, Mr. Winston. I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. I think that's what it's called. Was it? Ms. Hunt. I agree. I think it's a great idea, and it's just another level of transparency. <coughs> Right. Okay. Yeah, but that would be a five, to, uh, five to seven vote yeah, as opposed to a six. Okay. That's the super majority. The other is a super duper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with, with that, um, we'll, we'll be asking finance to give us a game plan, uh, which we will bring back and we'll share with the public. And uh, we'll go from there. Ms. Pauly, does that take a leave your does that take care of what you wish at this you. point? Thank you. Item number six. Discussion of possible acceptance of the Arizona State Library's grant in the amount of $25,595 for the San Jose Literacy Outreach Project for the Copper Queen Library. Allison Williams. Ms. Williams, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City staff, and members of the public. Um, this is the second uh, largest grant that we've received uh, for the San Jose Copper Queen Library Annex, which is uh, located at the BUSD Administrative Offices on Melody Lane, just a stone's throw. <coughs> outside from here. And uh, this grant in the amount of $25,595 is um, 
a real boom. It's an LSTA grant from Arizona Libraries, and it includes, among other things, um, a $5,000 book drop uh, to drop off books after hours, um, uh, furniture for both a children's library and a mini living room, as we have at the Copper Queen Library, four public computers for a computer lab, um, a drop-down vertical projector and screen, um, incentives, uh, more books for the collection, the permanent collection, and um, I was able to include in this grant additional funds for our Wi-Fi lending hotspot program, which um, I also received an Arizona Libraries grant for, but the Nature of that grant had a deadline, a cutoff point, which is coming up, and I was able to extend uh, that service and that program for another year through this grant, a portion of this grant. Um, and so uh, I just wanted to say just a couple updates on the Copper Queen Library Annex. We have um, uh, hired Heather Green, uh, which is for a grant funded um, position literacy outreach, which is with the Freeport McMurray grant, a portion of that $40,000 to hire Heather Green, who will start very soon. And um, we are planning on having an upcoming volunteer meet and greet to have volunteers at the Annex. If anybody's interested, please contact me. And I also just wanted to thank Councilmember Dunn um, for really uh, working with us and spearheading um, this project as part of the bigger project of um, the importance of literacy in our community and um, having a literate um, populace and just how very important uh, the library programs, the library services, and the extension of our collection to San Jose. Thank you, Ben. Do we have questions for this? Yes, uh, Well, first of all, I think this is an excellent grant. Congratulations. Thank you. And now, on the book drop that you're talking about, is it just for the books that are checked out from the satellite office or for any of them that you just dropped them off? That's a great question. So um, the, cup, the annex is not a new library. It's an annex. And by that, what it actually is, is a collection of the Copper Queen Library, an off-site collection in another physical location, just like biography, fiction. It's the San Jose Annex collection. And um, in uh, Cochise County, every resident can have a library card at every library in Cochise County. And so you can drop off all of your books, materials for the Copper Queen Library. And we do do interlibrary loans, so we do have residents here in San Jose who might get books from other libraries within the county can be dropped off there too. We already have one at the Senior Center. And we have one in Warren, which is still behind the fence uh, at City Hall. However, it is in the process of being moved down the block to right outside of Boys and Girls Club. We already have that permission. So there, are, these are drop-off points. And actually, in the very near future, probably the beginning of the year, uh, the county will go to a one-card library card system, and you will pick your home library. But so you don't have one card in the county. And this is a part-time position, 19 and a half hours. This is the one that will be in the budget. Yes, uh, it is in the budget, but it's grant funded. Correct. Any other questions, Brian? Anybody ask a short one? No, you're not, no. I just want to thank you all for the support of this annex. It's a big, big endeavor, but um, there are so many partners, and all of your support is so important. Thank you, Ms. Council, do we have a motion? I move to accept the Arizona State Library's LSTA grant in the amount of $25,595 of the San Jose University Outlook Project for the Copper Queen Library. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Ms. Carnell? Councilmember Klein? Aye. Councilmember Hanson? Aye. Councilmember Higgins? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dunn? Aye. 
Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Item number seven. Discussion of possible approval to allow the Bisbee Police Department to purchase two VHF F7010Ts, portable keypad radios, and two VHF P25 F7510T mobile radios from Levitt Communications to include a charger, doctor's docking station, and tenders and warranty using our available state RICO funds in the amount of $5,887.96, which is the state contract price. Mr. Uh, Chief Chuck. Thank you, Mayor, Council Member of Public. Um, just as you read, you know, currently our, uh, our current stock of uh, tank radios, uh, mobile and portable radios, uh, majority of them coming up on the 10 year mark. Uh, we've already been notified that they are end of life. Uh, they're no longer making parts for those radios. As they go down, uh, if there's parts available on the shelf, they'll fix them for us still, but they're, uh, they're no longer producing them. So once the parts run out, they're, they're no longer any good to us. Um, and we're spending money to, pay, to fix some of these radios that we can still be investing into uh, uh, to some new radios. So our, uh, our radio expert, uh, Mr. Ed Wayne, uh, he's, he's our go-to guy for radios for, for the city, uh, police and fire both, and he's even done some help out at the airport uh, in public works. He, uh, he's the one that recommended these uh, radios to us. He's actually field tested uh, both these models. and. Um, the mobile radio for sure uh, is going to be a, a far cry better than what we have now. Uh, the radios that we're currently using cost us upwards of, of to the tune of uh, $3,500 a piece. Um, this uh, ICOM is not quite the same as tape as far as uh, name brand uh, stuff, but uh, the quality is still there. Uh, we'll be able to get a six year warranty on those radios. Uh, so I feel pretty confident that. Uh, uh, getting those at least starting to replace some of our stock, uh, it, it needs to happen. And the radios uh, that we put in the, in the new toggles, the new to us toggles we got from the county, we have to provide them our radios to put into those. So uh, we're running a little short. So we'd like to uh, we'd like to start this process with the hopes of maybe over the next couple of years buying few more and slowly starting to phase out those older tapes rather than spend money to fix them, invest that money in something we know is going to give us a six year uh, return. And again, these are RICO funds. This is RICO funds, yes sir. Questions, Council? Mm -hmm. Yes. I've just got kind of a silly question. Um, and I realize this is from Levitt, not from you yeah, guys. Yes ma'am. But the uh, mic extension cable and the command mic is that supposed to be M-I-C or is it really M-I-K-E? <laughs> I believe it's M-I-C. <laughs> <laughs> Little O-C-E. Yes, it's one of these. <laughs> it's a mice. It's a mice. <laughs> I have a question. Um, how many total um, radios did you say you would say you needed? So um, I'm asking for in this. Uh, I'm asking for two right. portable radios, which is the radios you usually see us walking around carrying right. in our hand. And I'm asking for two mobile radios. Those are the radios that get installed in the car. Now these two radios will be installed in, in uh, the in, uh, deputy chief long and, and the vehicle that I drive. Um, the portable radios. Um, we're going to use those uh, sort of as a field test. Um, they're public safety grade radios. But before I make the commitment to purchase those for the entire working force for the police department, I want to make sure they're actually going to hold up. Uh, they're, they're not quite as, um, they just feel pretty light. And I want to make sure that they're going to stand up to uh, the use that it has put through by patrol. Um, they'll, they work good for myself uh, going from one meeting to the next. I'm not really uh, out on the road uh, patrolling as much as I used to, um, so it's not as abused, for lack of better words. Uh, it's just that they're, they're safety equipment that rely, we rely on, and they get used often, so they're, they're trying to get put through the ringer. Um, this is going to give us a, a, an ability to try these out and see if they'll work for us. If they do, the, the price is great. We can't beat the price. They come but how many, how many are you going to need? Eventually. Eventually. Um, 
Because well, you, you and the reason I'm asking is if, if you're going to be doing this for two or three years, and we know how many you're going to need, we think it's easier to get that. Well, what I'm hoping to do is, is a, a, in, a, in a dream world, <laughs> I'd love to get 10 radios of each each year. Um, so we have 14 police officers uh, funded right now. So each one of us needs one. Uh, we like to have a couple sitting on the shelf in case something does go bad and have to send one back to be repaired. I can pull one off the shelf and put it back into service. We also have the events that we normally have, like the 4th of July, things like that. We're bringing a lot of volunteers that have to put a radio in each of their hands. So ultimately, when it's all said and done, we want the 14 uh, that we would have, uh, plus uh, uh, a couple extra, uh, 15 if you have the ACO in there, and then a cache of 10 radios on top of that. Now, the good thing about this is that this, this is uh, their public safety grade radios. They'll do everything I need to do, but they'll also do everything that the uh, fire department need to do. So I've passed the same information along to uh, Chief Castillo because they're in the exact same boat we're in. In fact, they have some of their radios are even uh, a generation older than the tapes that we have. They still have some of their, their Motorola 1250s uh, in operation on, on some of their uh, trucks. And those, those have been end of life for a long, long time. So uh, this, this could be a potential for them as well. Um, we have 14 vehicles, plus we have several um, standby uh, swing units, we call them. If one goes down for service, there's, there's other ones we can get into. And then, of course, the volunteer cars we use, uh, the, the staff cars, support cars, the unmarks. Uh, things like that. So, so this is a drop in the bucket. This is a drop in the bucket, but the hope is um, if I had enough RICO funds to buy them all, I would, but um, this is this is the first step, and if we can start this and, and make sure these are going to work appropriately for us, uh, which I'm sure they will, uh, we can then start looking for next year's budget to try to get budget in there for, for five or ten more and, and continue that process. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I move. <laughs> you want to go? You go ahead and do it. It's a wall. I move to allow the Bismarck Police Department to purchase two BHF F7010T portable radios and two BHF P25F T mobile radios from London Communications to include chargers, docking system, antennas, and warranty using our available state RICO funds in the amount of $5,887.96, which is state contract pricing. I second. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. Ms. Horner. Council Member Klein? Aye. Council Member Hudson? Aye. Council Member Higgins? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dunn? Aye. Council Member Lindstrom? Aye. Mayor Smith? Aye, uh, motion passes unanimously. Chief, while you're there. Yes, sir. Item number eight, discussion of possible approval of an MOA uh, memo of understanding between Cochise County and the Bisbee Police Department for management control of the criminal justice information system computer operations. Sir. So what this is, is, is uh, because we use the county spilling uh, network, uh, we access our CGIS and uh, um, uh, CJIS through Spillman. And so we have to have this agreement in place to allow us to continue to do that. Uh, we access our state uh, database, or we access the state database NCIC, uh, ACIC through Spillman. And this is the MOU that's going to allow us to continue to do that. So there's no, fin uh, there's no uh, financial impact. All it is is just saying that we're allowing them to. Uh, or they're allowing us to work with them, and, and if anything bad happens, it's it's, it's a very uh, closely monitored network um, because there's so much uh, possibility for misuse with the the state system. That's where we check for wants and warrants and driver's license, and whatnot. Every officer who's, who has access or dispatcher who has access to that network has to be tested um, and has to uh, pass those tests. They have to have their background, uh, fingerprints, all those things have to be in place, and. Um, this is just now because we're on that their network through Spillman instead of our own independent network. We're just this is giving us that, that ability. Any questions? Any motions? I, I move to allow the Police Department to enter into a MOA memorandum of agreement between Coaching County and the Police Department for management 
Bureau of Criminal Justice Information System, the uh, CJI, that's computer operation. Second. Oh, you. We have a motion, we have a second. Ms. Cardano. Council Member Klein? Aye. Council Member Hansen? Aye. Council Member Higgins? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Dunn? Aye. Council Member Lindstrom? Aye. Mayor Smith? Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. Item number nine, discussion of possible approval of resolution R 1815, authorizing the city to accept a deed to Camp Nacho property. Uh, this first came before us in uh, March of 2017 uh, when I requested the council allow me to write a letter to uh, the uh, city of Wachuca uh, City because they had indicated that they no longer wanted to sponsor Camp Naco. And here we are, just a year, but 18 months later, and it's before us. So, uh, Mr. Smith. Mayor, uh, Council, uh, there was a time when this property uh, was held by the city. And um, I don't know the reason, but at some point it was transferred to what you could see. Uh, they've held it for some time. Um, my understanding from the city manager there is that uh, due to a lack of resources, uh, they're not able to pursue what their thoughts were originally for the property, and they would seek to uh, send it back to us for safekeeping. Um, there are some concerns about potential future uses of the property. I think we're dealt with uh, pretty well between the two cities, and we present to you the opportunity to receive the property back uh, and become stewards of this resource again. I've received uh, uh, inquiry from uh, the DAR uh, who has an interest in the property and hopefully we'll have the people and resources to be able to do something with it. Thank you, sir. Um, members of the council, do you have any questions of Mr. Smith before I go to the public? Hearing none, uh, Ms. Lucci Giacomino. Okay, just a, a point of clarification. Uh, the mayor in what should the city never buy it? What should the city have? The mayor, what should the city initiate? Um, Mr. Hicks. Thank you, Mayor, Council. <coughs> 
have similar concerns about uh, extending the resources, whether it's the uh, mental resources of staff, um, the potential grants that could be used elsewhere, um, that kind of thing, to a project that is off the beaten path. Um, it has a history of uh, being difficult to maintain. Um, probably take quite a bit of uh, things to keep vandalism down, keep uh, you know various other things from. Uh, and I think it would be very expensive to restore. Um, so what I would like to I propose um, that before taking on something like this, that there be one a very clear vision as to what it would be used for and how it would benefit the city. Two, there would be a strong business plan that is very detailed as to how uh, that would be executed. And three, a, a detailed cost-benefit analysis um, that was shared with the public um, before yeah, taking on something that could be really um, just a, a, a boat anchor on the city uh, and, and city resources. Um, if there's, a, a, there may very well be, um, I, from what I've read in the packet, I didn't see a, um, a solid plan there. Maybe there is uh, something in the works that I just hadn't heard about or don't see. So I'm not, I'm not denigrating possibilities or anything. I just uh, would, would like to see a, a, a very rigorous examination of, you know, if this is going to be a benefit to the city because we are in fairly dire straits right now taking on something like this. Thank you, sir. Mr. Roosevelt? You can probably answer some of those questions, please. Yeah, I'm going to try. Okay, Mayor and Council, thank you for uh, considering this evening. We did come back, come over before you in March, and bring forward a lot of answers to the questions that you have. Uh, Bisbee has never owned Camp Malcolm in the past. It was first owned by the Newell family who leased it to the U.S. military the construction of the camp during the Mexican Revolution. Um, it went back to the rules briefly, then went to the government, and was a CCC camp in which much of the structure of Bisbee was constructed from that camp. So it has close Bisbee ties. The stairs, the water control systems were built by the CCC when they were in the camp at Camp Mount. But it went back to the Newell family in 1950, and the Newells lived there along with a number of people here in Bisbee. Christine Rhodes grew up in Camp Naco. Um, then in 1990, the Newells decided they were no longer able to continue managing the property, and they sold it to Vision Quest, a for-profit youth treatment center. Um, Vision Quest was unable to get the necessary zoning that they needed to build the kind of treatment facility they wanted, and it was about that time in the early, about 1998, in which I got involved with Vision Quest in trying to figure out a way to preserve the camp. Um, at that point, Vision Quest had told me that whoever, if we could find somebody, a good steward to take it on, um, they would be willing to pass it on to that group. And we, we, kept, we made a, a talk to the city of Bisbee. At that point, there were a number of other options out there, including the University of Arizona, um, Arizona State University, all of them had stepped forward with interest. Financial considerations meant that that didn't happen. In 2006, there was an arson fire, and five of the buildings were burned. Um, and at that point, EPA became involved because there was an asbestos involved in the, um, the buildings. Um, they were tasked with the county of, of mitigating the asbestos and fencing the site, or the county would do so. So Vision Quest said, well, we will um, destroy the site if, it, if, if that's the case. At that point, I uh, approached a number of groups. I spoke to SIGO, who called Colin Powell and Colin Winfrey, anybody that I could think of that might have an interest in maintaining the camp. And that's when George Nurehan stepped forward, convinced the city council in Wachuca City to take possession of the camp. Um, we have a group called the Malcolm Heritage Alliance that then subsequently raised $600,000 in grants to mitigate the asbestos, which is now completely clear, to put temporary roofs on the buildings, to complete the fence, to complete the National Register nomination, 
and to complete a master plan, which I think all of you have received. The master plan looked at each building and determined what it would need to return. To complete certificate of occupancy, that doesn't mean that restoration is the only option. So at that, so you know, we've been working with what you can see again, it's gone back and forth. Uh, several times, as, as I said, we got to this point in March of 2017, and then Wachuca City, for whatever reason, a number of changes in their leadership, didn't complete the transfer at that time. So this is just completing that transfer that was approved in 2017. Um, the group, the non Heritage Alliance, would continue to do whatever we could to support this effort. We missed a couple of grants this year that were specifically for Buffalo Soldiers Organization. So there you know, money out there, that's the money that uh, the officers' quarters on Mark Fort Wachuca received this last year. Those grants come up and we can, you know, we have that permission to go forward that we'll continue to do that kind of support. In terms of airports, it is an incredibly important historic site. It could be part of the whole Bisbee tourism attraction. It has it is the only one of these border forts that was built in the Mexican Revolution that is still standing. It was also a CCC camp that was key to Bisbee's history. It has, um, there is a lot of military coast tourism out there. It is right up the road from the Naco Greenbush mammoth sites. It could bring those in. But also, it, there's the one hand, the full restoration of the camp, the use of the camp for art studios, and, educational facilities and libraries and museums and all of those things, but there's the other end of the spectrum in which we just maintain it and we have a site that tracks to us something like Fort Bowie. Um, at this point, in terms of costs, the only thing that Wachuca City has been paying for a number of years is the electric bill for the streetlights, which well, my understanding in the past has been about $800 a year. About once a year, the property